Okay, right. Um, so, uh, the homework the, this one was about uh, transformations of graphs and stuff, but we threw in some old things as well. So it started with this nice little bit of, uh, can you just simplify some expressions? A kind of classic OCR core one starter question. Uh, so, this is the cube root of x to the power of 6. Now remember, how do we write the cube root as a power to start with? A third. So that is x to the third to the power of 6. And we know that in that situation we multiply the powers. So 6 multiplied by a third, 2 x squared. And there is one mark. Okay. The next one. Um, well, let's let's tidy this up. We've got this 10y cubed. Now, 10y cubed. That's everything inside that bracket cubed, isn't it? So that's that's going to be 10 cubed and y cubed. So a thousand y cubed divided by 2y to the five. If we simplify that a bit more, we've got 3,000. And, and y to the what would we have here? 7. So we'd add the powers over 2y to the 5. At which point we will divide the 3,000 by 2 to get 1,500. And the y to the 7 over y to the 5 subtract the powers now. So we get 1,500y squared. And that was quite a generous three marks for what we just did with that. Okay. Question two. Um, I have messed up the copying of this again. So um, I need to go back and uh, try and do it right. I wonder why that seems to happen every week. There we go. Right, so that's uh, our very excitingly shaped graph. The graph of y equals f of x for minus 1 to 4 is shown above. Sketch the graph of y equals minus f of x in the same range. What, what do we call this transformation? What's, what's happened to go from f of x to minus f of x? It's a reflection in the x-axis. It's exactly that, reflection in the x-axis. So we want to recreate this, but um, upside down. So... <laughs> That's not very good. So our graph whoops, um, is going to be like that the other way. So what we want it at crossing still at 0 and 2. Uh, it's going to go down that loop. It's going to start up at minus 1, plus 1, like this. Oh, did, did I do that right? Is that about right? And then it's going to come down here like that. I've not drawn it particularly well, because I didn't get bored to set it right. But what we've got, that's, uh, that's 1, minus 1, minus 2, and that's plus 1, and there's minus 1. And it's, it's just about there, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah, it'll do. Uh, the point 1, 1 on y equals f of x is transformed to the point q on y equals 3 times f of x. State the coordinates of q. Um, so for part two, um, well, what again? Let, let's think through what we understand about transformations. Three f of x. What kind of transformation? Describe that to me. Let somebody else do it. What were you going to say, Matthew? Uh, stretch. Y stretch parallel to the y-axis. Exactly. Stretch the, the vertical stretch. So a point one one is going to be three times as far away from the x-axis as it was before. So where would that point go to? What have we got? One three. One three. Yeah. Um, and that's it for our two marks. That's all they wanted. And finally, describe the transformation of the graph y equals f of x to the graph y equals f of x plus 2 inside brackets. So thinking of, you've all put on your poster and your bedroom wall all these uh, four transformations. So thinking through where that one would come, that would be what? What's the key word that we have to have?
translation. Okay, so that's got one of our marks. Um, and then we need to describe the direction of that. So what would it be? Yeah. Um, the, the minus x. Okay, so uh, two units or minus two units parallel to the x axis. Or in the x direction, or two units in the negative x direction. Any of those would work to describe that. Great, that was six marks for, for all of that stuff. Okay, and we're on to question three, which is throwing in another of these completing the square questions, uh, which we're getting really good at. And we need to be good at completing the square because it's going to come back um, when we finally get round to doing the circle after half term. <laughs> See a joke in there. Okay. Um, what do we have to do with that first? Take the two out. Take the two out. Not in a, a gangster style way, just <laughs> that would be mean. Um, then we need to factorise it. Uh, we need to, no, we need to do that thing with this now. What do we do next? We've, we've now got this minus 12 there, so we're going to do what? Complete the square. What are we going to do? Complete the square. Complete the square. So what we're looking for, half of the 12 is going to make it a minus 6 in there. Now when we multiply this out, that will leave us with a plus 36, but it would happen twice. So we want uh, that we want to take away that twice thirty six that we have plus eighty. So this is two x minus six all squared plus eight. Do you agree with that? And you can always check it, can't you? You can always check through. That would be two lots of x squared minus twelve x. So that's the minus twenty four. Plus 36, so that's plus 72. So plus another 8 gives us the plus 80. We're good. State the equation of the line of symmetry of the curve. Well, we've talked about this so much now, haven't we? This tells us about the minimum point, the minimum point on our quadratic curve. Right, um, so we're back. <laughs> Sorry, oh, hang on, this will all be on the video. I can't just say we're back. <laughs> that, how will we know that we're back if I've just seamlessly edited it in? Because it helped. I have to cut. Can I I'll cut this bit out? Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'll start after the bit that I stop talking. Yeah. And then, great. You've got to assume exactly the same position as you like. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I was. I'll carry on. It will be fine. Um, so for part two, seeing the equation of the line of symmetry of the curve. Um, well, all that matters here. Remember, oh yeah, I know what I was saying before I deleted it. Um, <laughs> oh, this is, a, this is a curve like this, isn't it? On the minimum point. <laughs> this is going to be the worst video ever, and it's a pretty low standard. <laughs> um, we know that there's the line of symmetry, and there would be uh, the minimum point. That's, that's what we get from this. So from this, we get... But that's 0.68. Yeah, we remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, because of the useless video editing, but I haven't even done it yet. Um, that, that's what we know about completing the square. We know that it gives us the minimum point. So, these last two marks are just about using that information to get something from here. The, the line of symmetry is this vertical line. So that would be the line x equals 6. And for part 3, the tangent to the curve would be this horizontal tangent. There, at the minimum point, the tangent will be horizontal. And so that would be the line with equation y equals 8. It's worth mentioning for these final two marks that if you'd got something wrong here, 
but had ended up writing an answer, then as long as your answer here made some kind of sense, you would still get the marks carried forward for these two values. So, so whatever you have in this bracket, the x value that makes that bracket zero, you get a mark for part two. And whatever you have hanging around at the end, if it's just that number that you put y equals to at the end of there, you would get the mark for that one as well. So give yourselves the uh, carried forward marks, add them all up, and that's maths. Thank you.